That rim is only eight feet tall. But that's not the only small thing in this video. Standing at just 5'4", you can see how tough it'll be for me to dunk on an actual 10-foot rim. But that's exactly what I'm aiming to achieve in this four-part series. I've got to be crazy, right? Only two players under six foot have ever won an NBA dunk contest, so this is going to be a monumental challenge. But it is possible. I'm athletic, already trained like Curry for 30 days, and even hired a personal trainer from Austria to design a program that'll help me jump out of this world. To put it in perspective, I need a 45 inch vertical, just three inches shy of Michael Jordan's to even pull off a simple dunk. I'm gonna need sponsors. Oh, I don't have any yet. Ow. <laughs> so I'm gonna to have to use what I have available for now to test my vertical and start the journey, all based on the plan from Paul. You know, the Austrian trainer. In this clip, I'm using an app to gauge my vertical jump, which averages about 24.7 inches from a couple of attempts. That's above average, but there's room for improvement as we aim higher throughout this series. And trust me, we're going to refine these measurements as we progress, for show. However, I'm already facing a major hurdle. Just a week before starting the series, I twisted my left ankle walking back from a layup. Yes, walking. It's a surprising twist, but it's not slowing me down. So, I'm committed to a rigorous schedule of physical therapy twice a week, along with home treatments, to ensure my ankle is in top form for my final vertical test at the end of this journey. Why am I doing all of this? Because I want to prove that nothing you're born with should hold you back. If I, at 5'4", can dunk by the end of this, then truly anything is possible. So it's day one, we're starting off light, but the intensity will ramp up. Stay tuned because you won't want to miss how far we can push this. Until then, you should know what the first three weeks of this journey is all about. It's all about the absorb phase, baby! Mastering the art of safe landings and force absorption. Safety is our priority as I adapt to a new level of training intensity, focusing on exercises that enhance shock absorption, refine my landing techniques, and improve balance. Despite the focus on lower body mechanics, overall fitness remains key. That's why today, skipping ahead to day four, I'm also hitting upper body workouts to ensure I maintain full body strength. Now, I want to emphasize that my ankle is feeling much better by this point, but we're not taking any chances. So I started incorporating basic ankle rehab exercises like balancing on this stability ball to ensure a solid injury-free foundation. But just when I thought I had it all figured out, I realized something. Paul has been phenomenal. Can we get a let's go Paul in the comments, please? but he won't be showing me the proper mechanics of jumping to ensure a max vertical. So I'll have to take matters into my own hands here with the help of YouTube. I headed outside to practice actually dunking for the first time. And after analysis, it was eye-opening to see the areas I need to work on, particularly my penultimate and block steps. We'll go more in depth on those later on. Despite these hurdles, it's incredibly motivating to see how close I'm getting to the rim already on day five, even without good form. Today kicked off my first serious physical therapy session, and it came with a startling discovery. Guided by an incredible physical therapist, we unearthed a troubling fact about my left ankle. It's not only weaker than my right, but it also bears the scars of multiple previous injuries. Yes, you heard that right. My ankles wobbled noticeably, and my left ankle couldn't extend as far as the right. These visuals starkly illustrate the challenges we're up against. This isn't just about getting back to baseline. It's about overcoming a legacy of injuries to come back stronger than ever. But we have to push forward. So after therapy, I dove into perfecting a critical move for dunking, the penultimate step. The goal is to gain momentum while lowering my body to prepare for an explosive liftoff. This step sets up the final jump, aligning my body to maximize power and height. But once I finished with that, I shifted to strength training later in the day. So here's an epic montage of me working out with my friend Andrew gassing me up at the end. He's gonna have a recruitment letter in his thing by next week, bro. Yeah. Day in, day out, action, no <laughs> As you can see, I'm a little stiff. So in addition to my regular workouts, jumping training, and physical therapy, I'm gonna be doing stretching routines once per week to increase my flexibility. Based on the grimacing on my face, you can see how hard this was for me. It's my first day trying these stretches and my form isn't perfect yet, but I'm working on it. Remember, every expert was once a beginner, so go easy on me, okay? By next evening, I was focused on mastering single leg jumps and continuing to do strength exercises for my lower body. It started off shaky, but soon I got the hang of it. Even tackling single 
leg frontal jumps to boost my balance. I also tried out skater jumps, which are fantastic for injury prevention and keeping agile. But that's not all, folks. I've added core workouts to my routine. Paul, the goat, says this is key to stabilizing my body and maximizing my jump potential. And yes, I've been sneakily practicing my penultimate step during downtime at work too. So all this hard work is building up to a big moment. Catching lobs on a shorter rim. This will be a real test of how far I've come, so stay tuned for that at the end of this video. But how could I possibly catch lobs even on shorter rims without honing my form? So today, I went back to basics with a single step approach to my penultimate step and focused on my block foot positioning. That's the foot that is responsible for takeoff, as you can see here. Starting with something simple, I practiced dunking a mini ball on a nine foot rim, integrating everything I've learned. There's a long road ahead, but each step forward is progress. Also, this was fun, but that fun was short lived. On day 11, things started ramping up a bit, or at least I thought they were. You see, Paul suggested I start slightly slowing down the tempo of my workouts, you know, to build explosiveness, but I was doing the two second contraction at the wrong part of the workout this whole time. Next time, I'll do it right. And before that, I had a one hour long physical therapy session to continue rehabbing my left ankle in preparation for tomorrow. On day 12, I literally aimed high. Fresh from physical therapy and feeling strong from the day before, I attempted to touch a nine and a half foot rim. If I succeed, my vertical leap would reach a new record of 32 inches, a massive eight inch gain since the start of this challenge. All I can say is you're definitely jumping high. I think you were a little closer than the rest. But despite my best efforts, today ended in disappointment. I didn't reach the rim by about three inches, suggesting my vertical might now be around 29 inches. Still a significant improvement, over four inches in just under two weeks, but not the milestone I hoped for. This hits hard, and I truly felt defeated as the day wrapped up. However, the journey isn't over. As I continue to hone my strength and plyometrics in part two of this series, I'm determined to reach that nine and a half foot mark and exceed it. I'm closer than I think, and I'm not giving up. But not giving up is as much of a physical hurdle as a mental one though, because in addition to my disappointment, my left ankle was left somewhat tender from yesterday. I'm doing my best to get it to 100% though and beyond. And back to my workouts, remember the focus is still on landing. So if you think what you're seeing on screen is crazy, remember we're just getting started. And now it's day 15 and I tried again with the slower, more deliberate movements to enhance explosiveness, but this time I did it the right way. Additionally, I've begun incorporating low box jumps, which are ideal for beginners in pilometrics because it helps increase explosive strength with a lower risk of injury. I've also started doing depth jumps and they, on the other hand, focus simply on perfecting landing mechanics. And later, I raised the bar yet again by taking on my biggest challenge yet, catching alley-oops and attempting to dunk on an eight and a half foot rim. It's a test of skill, courage, and my journey of overcoming setbacks. My friend Alex throws the lobs and I leap with all my might while trying not to re-injure my ankle. Oh, Lord. Oh, I, hit him. I hit him on the- oh. Oh. Despite my best efforts and the adrenaline, the day ends in disappointment again. I wasn't able to dunk as I hoped, so returning home, I texted my friends about my frustration, feeling defeated. The footage painfully shows that I was playing down to the rim, and I still need significant work on my timing and technique for catching lobs. Now in the face of failure, we have a choice, let it break us or make us stronger. In this series, part one has been a battleground of growth and setbacks. I'm determined to use what I've learned and harness this defeat as fuel for my comeback in the next installment. But while you wait for part two, where I'll come back stronger and more prepared, check out my journey in another video where I trained like Curry for 30 days.